Uh, hey, Shalom family, most high Christ bless. We'll start right here. Let's go to Sirach chapter 4. I mean, I'm sorry. Yep, Sirach chapter 4, verse 28. I'm going to start right there. Might as well. That's what I got. A star next to, so I must really like that scripture. Let's start right there. What verse, Captain? Chapter 4, verse Ocho. There's the book of Sirach, chapter 4 and verse 28. Yes, sir. Strive for the truth unto death, mm. and the Lord shall fight for thee. So the scripture says, strive for the truth unto death. I like that thing. Strive for the truth unto death. Read it one more time. I just like how it sounds. Strive for the truth unto death. Mm. And the Lord shall fight for thee. And the Lord is going to fight for you if you're striving for the truth unto death. Let's go to this one. Let's go to this one. First Corinthians chapter four, verse nine. Keep that in mind. Strive for the truth unto death. There's the book of first Corinthians chapter four and verse nine. Yeah. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last. Why he sent us last. Go ahead. As it were appointed to death. What was it appointed for? As it were appointed to death. It's appointed for the prophets to die. Read that thing again. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles last, mm -hmm. as it were appointed to death. Mm -hmm. For we are made as a spectacle unto the world. We're made like a spectacle unto the world. So the brothers that you see right over here, the brothers in black shirts. The men that's out to camp, the brothers that's sitting in front of you, maybe, you know, Azariah and Aniah, you know what I'm saying? These brothers are the prophets. But it's appointed for them to die. So, you know, when you when 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 you know leadership comes around, or uh I was talking to JDL the other day too. He was like, sometimes you're just talking to the, to the, you know, somebody and you just picking up stuff. You're just picking up different different things just from having that conversation with them. You know, um, I was in uh, Arizona when Deacon Yawasop came out and uh, I, I think I wrote a whole class just listening to him talk. I just was taking notes. I was like, oh, man, I got a whole class right now. Um, so one of the things that was said was that if. I die, or if you die, right, what is going to be the reaction of our wives and our children? Will they maintain their integrity? Are they going to fall out? And then the question, the vice versa, right? Some of you brothers might be in here because your wife is in here. If she dies, are you going to maintain your integrity? Are you going to fall out? Are your children's going to maintain their integrity? Are they going to fall out? Let's go to that. Go to that 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We'll start at 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 12. Yeah. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Mm -hmm. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Mm -hmm. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he... Be pleased to dwell with her. Let her not leave him. Mm. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean. But now are they holy. But now are they holy. So what should be happening, right? The process of what should be happening is that, brother, you know, you brothers, you soldiers, you officers, as you continue to grow in the truth, the wife that may not have believed initially, her, her, her uh what's the word her roots should start to 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 get deeper into the truth right it should start to develop right and vice versa right say your husband came in and, and you he didn't believe his roots should start to develop and go deeper into the truth go deeper into the dirt right they should keep going deeper and deeper if you please to dwell if you truly please to dwell let's go to that psalms chapter one right quick Psalms chapter one. Appointed unto death. Let me get there right quick. I went the wrong way. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Psalms chapter one, verse one. Yeah, I think that's it. 
Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1. Yeah. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of a scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Here it come. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in a season. Mm. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Read verse 3 again. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water. So you supposed to be like a tree planted next to a river of water. What does that mean? Right? The ground is soft. Right? It's more fertile. You should continue to dive deeper. Your roots should be strong because you're next to somebody. You're next to a spouse that's keeping the commandments. Your, your roots could, should continue to grow. But the question is, again, what would your integrity be? Would you continue to maintain and keep the faith when your spouse dies? How are you going to deal with that death? How are you going to deal with it? Are you going to say all praises? My husband, my wife has returned to the father. Let's go to that. Let's go to Sirach. I mean, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes in the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Start at verse 1. There's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 1. Yeah. The word of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the preachers. Vanities of vanities. So oh. the son of David, that's Solomon. This is Solomon, right? Go ahead. All is vanity. What prophet hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. So it's a one generation passeth, passeth away. It's talking about one generation of men, one generation of women pass away. Read it again. One generation passes away, and another generation cometh. But the earth abideth forever. But the earth is going to be here forever. The earth is going to be here forever. Go to, uh, we're going to come right back to this. Go to uh, Exodus chapter 20, I believe is verse, uh, what's the verse, Ananias? Help me out. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, do, 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 do. Verse 5. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5. Yeah. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So again, like the like the man said in in uh, in the New Testament, he was talking to Christ. Remember, the guy was born blind, and the disciples said to him, "Which one of these men, or what what did this man do to be born blind?" Y'all got to really think about the question that they asked. What did this man do? To be born blind. What you should be teaching your brothers, or what you what you what you should be teaching your wives, teaching your children, is that there are ripple effects to you not keeping the commandments of God today. You might not see them immediately. You might not see them today. You might not see them next week. You might even die and think you escaped that punishment. But then you come back and you're born blind. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes. There's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 4. So I might be saying something to some of y'all brothers and sisters y'all might never hear, heard before, right? The Bible speaks about regeneration, not reincarnation. It's a difference. It's a difference, right? Regeneration means that you're going to come back as the children of Israel. I'll just leave it like that. You're going to come back. As the children of Israel, you're not going to come back as a beetle, not going to come back as an alligator, as a turtle, right? That's reincarnation. Different. Go ahead. Ecclesi you're not going to come back as an Edomite. No. <laughs> you're going to come back as Israel. Yeah. You ain't yep. coming back as Steve Jobs. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> you was going to say something tonight? Go ahead, sir. I was going to talk about, it was this brother that came up to the camp when we was in Lemon Grove. Yeah. And um, he was really distraught because his, his brother had just recently committed suicide, right? Mm. So he stopped. He had been there a couple of times, right, Azariah? He was there a couple of times, you know, right? So what I was telling him, I said, you know, your brother, he may not have heard this truth. Mm. 
but you are listening to it right now, mm -hmm. your brother may come back mm. and get an opportunity to hear this truth. But you're hearing it right now, and the thing is, this is your chances right now. Mm. While you're being exposed to this truth, you can't fall away. You gotta, you gotta sit there and you gotta stick with it and you gotta do it with it. So what? I don't, I don't know. The brother never came back. What's the scripture? Say. What's the scripture? Y'all know the scripture where it say, uh, "Every every ear shall hear." Every ear is gonna hear the gospel of Christ. Yep. They might not hear it in this life. They might hear it in another one. But every ear is gonna hear the gospel of Christ. Uh, let's go to this. Go back to Ecclesiastes in the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter one and verse four. Yeah. One read, generation. The, read verse three again. Well, yeah, that was four. Yep. Verse four. One generation passes away and another generation cometh, mm. but the earth abideth forever. Mm. The sun also arises and the sun goeth down and hastes to his place where he arose. So now the Bible is talking about the sun. Now Solomon is talking about the sun. The cycle of the sun is what? It's continuous. He's comparing the generations of men to the cycle of the sun. Give me that in a uh, second Ezra. I think it's chapter chapter or say like a ring. You know what I'm talking about? Second Ezra chapter five and verse 41. Yeah. And I said, behold, O Lord. Can y'all hear him? It sound like it's feeling like he low to me. Yeah. Can't hear you a little bit, man. You got to got to get up on that mic a little bit. Second Ezra chapter five and verse 41. Yeah. And I said, behold, O Lord, yet are thou nigh unto them that be reserved till the end. Mm. And what shall they do that have been before me? Or we that be now or they that shall come after us. So Ezra saying the Lord is closer to those that are coming at the end. Go ahead. Verse 42. And he said unto me, I will I will link, liken my judgment unto a ring, mm -hmm. like as there is no slackness of the last. Even so, there is no swiftness of the first. There you go. So he said his judgment, he said life is like a ring, right? You can't tell where it starts, where it ends. It's just like a big circle. It's just a big circle. What's that? What's that? The Lion King. The circle of life. No? Y'all don't remember that movie? All right, cool. Go ahead. Verse 43, so I answered and said, couldest thou not make those that have been made and be now and that are forth to come at once that thou mightest show thy judgment the sooner. So Ezra was asking the question, he said, can't you take all four generations, put them all on the planet at the same time and then just bring the judgment to everybody simultaneously? Go ahead. Verse 44, then answered he me and said, the creature may not haste above the maker. Mm -hmm. Neither may the world hold them at once that shall be created therein. So the, you got to understand the world cannot even contain all the spirits that the Lord created. The planet Earth cannot contain all the spirits that he created. I remember the first time you broke this down to me, you, you uh, uh, likened it to a woman pregnant. It's coming. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 45. And I said, as thou hast said unto thy servant, that thou which givest life to all has given life at once to the creature that thou hast created, and the creature bear it, even so it might now also bear them that now be presented at once. Now be present at once. He said that, he said that why, the world can hold everybody at once. Go ahead. And he said unto me. And he said, so now this is the angel talking to him. The angel said. As the womb of a woman, mm -hmm. and say unto her, If thou bringest forth children, why dost thou it not? Together, but Re read one. Read that again. Why dost thou it not together? Go ahead. Why dost thou it not together, but one after another pray her therefore to bring forth ten children at once? It's commas and periods and question marks all in there. Gotta like, you know, use those things. You finna say something, Ezra? I'm not gonna comment on man's reading. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta nah. utilize the symbols that's in the sentences, sir. The periods and the commas and the question marks. It's okay. That's why those things are there. Let me get it. Let me get it. It says, um, where is that? Verse 46. It says, And he said unto me, Ask the womb 
of a woman and say unto her, if thou bringest forth children, why doest thou it not together? But one after another. So that's a question. Why don't women have children simultaneously? If you're pregnant with twins, do the twins pop out together? No. They come out one after the other. You finna say something, sir? No, no. I'm, 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 you I'm, 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 look I'm, like you're pondering over there. Oh, so it says, uh, pray her therefore to bring forth ten children at once. And I said she cannot, but must do it by distance of time. So that's the way the world is. That's the way the world is. We gonna all we all come back at some point, right? So you gotta understand. If you lose that person, you lose that husband, you lose that wife. You gotta understand. They are going home to the father. So you gotta put that in your mind. Go ahead, Anna. You gonna look like you gonna say something? I was gonna ask the brothers a question. When did um, when did creation end? When did creation end? When was the what was the last day of creation? Creation. Creation. What was the last day of creation? Not a trick question. Send it's it by. Brother Tola. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, with we ju what we just read, hey, creation always continues. What? You got it? <laughs> what we just read, creation is always continuous. Creation is continuous? Because uh, according to... I didn't get. I, I wasn't reading the whole thing, but with you, but uh, you know, it's 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 ever ever it's ever continuous. Okay. Anybody else? Is the Lord still creating today? Is He still creating new people? Yeah, He's still. Re, uh, we still regenerating. We're still regenerating. Yeah. That's a there's a difference. It's a difference, right? Yeah. The question you said was. What was the last day of creation? Yeah. According to Genesis, that was the seventh day, the Sabbath day, right? The seventh day? He well, created stuff on the seventh day? No, day? The sixth oh, day. On the the sixth, sixth day. Sixth day. Okay. Go, to, go to Genesis chapter. It's <laughs> a trick question. They th I, I think I they're confused. I'm like, he trying had to that trick look me. like I'm about to fool somebody. <laughs> go to uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Genesis chapter 2, and verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and not the host of them. So it says, thus the heavens were, were finished and all the hosts of them, which mm -hmm. means all the spirits were already created. Yep. You know, when we die, we go back to the creator. We go back to the most high. We get judged. Mm -hmm. We come back. Mm -hmm. So it's a cycle. It's what the scripture says. There's nothing new under the That's sun. That's where we're going back okay, to Ecclesiastes. Cool. All right, cool. Ecclesiastes. Go ahead, though. No, I'm point? just saying there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Everything that was here was, was here before. He made you it. Know? In those six days. Right. And he stopped. <laughs> and he stopped. He said, that's enough. Yeah. I'm done. I did it. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Who's that verse 5? You already told her you look confused. I got it now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. The sun also arises and the sun goeth down. And hasteth to his place where he arose. So it's a cycle to the sun. Go ahead. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It, it whirleth about continually. And the wind returneth again according to his circuits. Circuits, circuits. Circuits. It's circuits. all right. It's all right. Jericho, you good? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So the wait, so what they got every year, what they got down in Texas, Louisiana, what they call it, uh, hurricane season. That is not a new hurricane. That is not... Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Bessie and Hurricane uh, uh, whatever other name they want to name it. It's the same win over and over and over and over and over again. Y'all be watching that stuff like, oh, man, it's a new hurricane. Ah, man, the scripture says, read it again. The wind goeth toward the south and turneth about unto the north. See that? The wind went down south and then it came back again to Texas, Louisiana every year. Come back. Florida, Louisiana, they get hit every year the same time of year. It's not a new hurricane. Go ahead. It whirleth about continually, mm -hmm. and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. Yes. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Mm. Unto the place from whence the rivers come thither, they return again. All things Let's are. Let's say this right there. Read that again. 
All the rivers run into the sea. So just like you see, right, you got the Mississippi River, you got the Nile River, you got all these different rivers that run around the planet. He says all of them go into the sea, but have you ever seen something say, hey, man, the sea is about to overflow. It's too full. Ah, it's a circuit. It's a circle. Go ahead. Yet the sea is not full. Yet the sea, it didn't, it didn't fill up. Go ahead. Unto the place from whence the rivers come. Thither they return again. Thither they return again. They go back into the rivers, back into the seas, back into the oceans. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. And you go down there sometimes. Go ahead. I know you're going to say something. You're going to drop some some uh, some deployment stuff on us. Go ahead. No, no. I'm oh. just I'm just going to land back on what you said. Yeah, there you go. So we talked about we talked about just a few, few minutes ago in Ecclesiastes 1 to 5 how Cap said it's a, a, a wind. It's the same wind, right? We all, everybody that read the book of Acts, you know this, right? Go to Acts chapter 27, and we're going to read verse 14, because what is this storm that takes place in, in the Mediterranean scene every year around uh, Day of Atonement? Yep. Right? Verse 14, sir? 14. Acts chapter 27 and verse 14. But not long after there arose against it a, temp a tempestuous wind. Uh, what kind of wind? Temptuous. A tempestuous wind. One more time. A temptuous wind. My bad. Read. Called? Eurycliton. 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 <laughs> so those of you who read Acts, and when you read Ecclesiastes, what the captains read, said it's the same wind. This storm takes place in the Mediterranean every year during right around the Day of Atonement. Paul got uh, stuck on that island due to this storm. So mm -hmm. it's just biblical proof in the Bible that 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 these winds are the same winds. And that, and that we understood that we understood that it was the same cycle. Understood, we understood these things. Right. Huh? They had one name for it. It wasn't like, oh, this is your cloud on next week. This is Sandy the next year. I'm like, nah, it's the same wind. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes in the Bible, please. Ecclesiastes chapter one and verse eight. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eyes, the eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. There it come. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Stay right here in the same book, chapter 6, verse 10. So the thing that has been, what did it say? The thing that has been, it is that which shall be. What's the thing that hath been? Let's see. Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, and verse 10. Yeah. That which hath been is named already, and it is known that it is man. It is known it is what? And it is known that it is man. So when you go back to chapter 1 and verse 9, read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. The thing that hath been. So that thing, again, that's man. The thing, the man that has been. It is that which shall be. It is the man that shall be. Go ahead. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Mm -hmm. And there is no new thing. There under is the, no new man. And there is no new thing under the sun. Yes. Is is there anything whereof? Is there any man whereof? It may be said, see, this is new. Mm -hmm. It have been already of old time, which was before us. Which was before us. Go ahead. Uh, we're going to stay right in the same book. And this is laying back and all what the cap just said. Ecclesiastes book, uh, chapter 4, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 16. There is no end of all the people. There is no end of what? There is no end of all the people. So as we've been talking about, there is no end of all the people. Like we just start, start in second after chapter five, you know, what I'm saying the earth can only hold so much at one time. Read. Even of all that have been before them. Even of all that have been before them. Mm -hmm. So we just keep coming around, coming right. around. Right. Yep. Read. I look at my new baby Juju. She two months old. Be like, welcome home, boo. Welcome back. Re they, just re fin finishing out for me real quick. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. So the ones that come after, like me, I'm not going to be able to look at you, anybody in this room, be like, man, there go Moses. Nah. That's Sarah. No, we, it, 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 we don't have that. Uh, we don't know. We don't have we, that clarity. We, we don't, don't have that clarity. Read. Yeah. Surely this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. So surely this is vanity, vexation of spirit, because I know everybody in here that ran into somebody like, man, I know I know you from somewhere, <laughs> but you just can't figure it out. You could have been them two uh, two Israelites 
stroving against one another when Moses went by. <laughs> right. Right. That could, could be you. That could be me and Cap right now. I'd be like, and, and he could be Moses and be like, what, what you gonna kill us like you did the Egyptian? But <laughs> yeah. well, we can't figure that thing out. Right? There could be Malcolm and Martin sitting in here right now. Who knows? Who knows? Harriet Tubman. You know? Right? We don't know. All right, let's go to this. Let's go to second Ezra. You got something in there? Oh, I thought you was reaching for me. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Read the next scripture. That's going to explain everything that um, Azariah was just talking about. Um, Ecclesi back in um, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things. Mm -hmm. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those. So when we come back, it's, it's, he's telling you right there, you know, like, like Azariah was saying, we don't know who we were. And a lot of people try to attribute, um, man, I feel like, a, what they call it, um, deja vu. Deja vu. As being uh, a glimpse of remembering who you were in the past or you've been through this before. Yep. No. It says right here, there's no remembrance of those things before. Let, I'm kind of think what the babies know, man. I'll be like, the babies be looking at you like yeah. they know who you are, yeah. you know. But I think that stuff just fades away. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to that scripture. I like that scripture. Read that one more time. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 11. Yeah. There is no remembrance of former things. There is no remembrance of former things. So the life that you lived in the past, you don't remember what you may have done. You don't remember the different things you may have done. Here it come. Watch this. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come. Stop. Read that one more time. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come. Neither should it be any remembrance of the things that are to come. You got to understand, like I was saying at the beginning, some of you brothers that's over here in black shirts, some of the men that's out at camp, some of the men you see in front of you, the Lord gave them specific understanding on prophecy. Read it again. Watch what he said. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come. The prophecies that made that the Lord may have revealed to you, you might not remember. But guess what? You know, for some reason, you are driven to keep the commandments and go out there and teach the people the commandments. You don't know why. You just know you got to do that. I just got to go out and do this thing. This is not my choice. Right. I, I had this conversation, you know, from time to time. This is not my choice. I don't wake up. It's like, I don't feel like uh, keeping the commandments today. I don't really feel like keeping the Sabbath. That never crosses my mind. It's like I am, it is, it is in, innately in me. If I am not keeping the commandments, I would, I don't know what I would do. I would, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Just like you got to get up and go to work to feed yourself every day. I feel the same priority in keeping the commandments of God and teaching our people that they have to keep the commandments of God. Why? We'll read the scripture again. Why? There is no remembrance of former things. Mm -hmm. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. With those that shall come after. You don't remember those things. You might not remember the things that the Lord told you, but you just know I got to go out here and do this thing. Yep. You're so, there you go. Your spirit bear witness that we are the children of God. You just, you just know I got to go do this thing. You just know you got to put these fringes on. You don't know why. And if you don't feel that way, Right. You might just be you might be that brother, sister when your husband or when your wife die that you just going to fall out. That's that's a litmus test right there. Do you feel that? Like, oh, I got to do this. Go ahead, Azra. You can say that. Nah. Uh, nope. Nah. OK, let's go. You hit second it. You, Ezra. Hit it. you hit it. Second Ezra chapter seven. And I you finna say something? Go ahead. I'll just think about because you say you see a brother sometimes that that used to be with us. He's no longer with us. And sometimes you see him with fringes and sometimes you see him without fringes. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's like there's no way in the world. I just feel naked if I walk outside <laughs> with a regular T-shirt on. Yeah. You know, it's like. To be honest with you, I feel weird going to sleep. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, there's no law that says you got to sleep with your fringes on, but I'm just saying. I'll I say just, to look upon them. Yeah, look upon them. You know, I'm yeah, sleeping, yeah. my eyes are shut. Yeah, but I still feel out of place if yeah. I if, if I don't. Brothers and sisters want to put fringes on their pajamas. Yeah, feel, feel free. free. You feel know what I'm saying? Free. Feel you, free. It doesn't make any difference to me because of how I sleep, yeah. so I don't need fringes on my clothes. Yeah, you might have a nightmare. Ah, <laughs> look up and be no fringes and be like, oh snap, you know. <laughs> So if you feel like that, put your fringes on. You know? <laughs> Shoot. Go ahead. You just say something? No? Okay. So, uh, 2 Ezra chapter 7. 
verse 1. Watch this. Second Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the night of four. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Up, Ezra, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. So Ezra is talking to an angel. Here it come. And I said, Speak on. My God then said he unto me. You got to read that right, man. Read it again. And I said, Speak on. My God. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in white place, that it might be deep and great. Stop right there. Stop right there. All right, listen, I got a question for the brothers. Uh, right there in verse 3, Ezra is talking to an angel. And he says to the angel, speak on my God. Why did Ezra call this angel my God? Was he worshiping angels? Why did he say that? Why did he say that? Brothers, I have no clue. <laughs> no clue. You got something? Brother Ira, um, yes, the words was coming th through the angel from God? The words was coming from God through the angel. Absolutely. That's exactly what's going on. So that's why he's saying, speak on my God. Even though he's talking to the angel, he knows that the message in which he's receiving is coming from God. I hope y'all sisters understood what I just said. I hope y'all understood what I just said. Because I'm going to show you something. Go ahead. Kind of like the words are coming out your mouth right now. We're going to see. Okay. We're going to see. We're going to see. I, let's I, go I, to the I, I keep jumping the gun. I'm nah, sorry. Nah, you good. Whew. You good. Let's go to. Let's, let's go. Let's get all excited up in here. Let's go to first. Let's go to John in the Bible. Chapter 10, verse 34. There's the book of John. Chapter 10 and verse 34. Yes. Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. I said, you are gods. Why are you men gods? Because the words in which you speak were delivered through the most high to you. You got to lead your family with those things. And you sisters got to see your husbands in that way. The words that he's given you are the words of God. They're not the word of uh, Billy. They're not the word of Ken. They're not the word of, of, uh, uh, of Anthony. Right? That's not what it is anymore. Now this man is God. You got to see him as such. Go back to it. Go back. Go back to 2nd to Ezra's. 2nd Ezra's, chapter 7 and verse 3. And again and again and again, the litmus test, like I said, the litmus test to know if you're going to really survive when your spouse may pass is going to be, how are you really dealing with him today? Do you see that man? Do you see that woman as a child of God? Do you truly see that? Are they still the same person that they was when you walked in the door? Do you still see them that way, perceive them that way? Even though they might be changed, they might be a completely changed person, but do you still perceive them that way? Guess what? If you do, chances are when that person passed, you gone. You out the door. Go back to uh, Second Ezra chapter 7. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 3. Yeah. And I said, speak on, my God. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in, in a wide place that it might be deep and great. So when, when, your, when your husband is saying something to you, right, do you ever say to him, speak on, my God? <laughs> nah, because they don't believe that thing, man. Mine's do. Your wife say that? Oh, man, that's beautiful. Sis Karen, shout out to Sis Karen. Oh, you don't believe me? Nah, I didn't say I didn't. Hey, if you say she do. No, nah, and I was looking at me. <laughs> thou sayest, man. What did what did Sarah say to uh or uh, yeah. uh calling him Lord? Yep. You think I'm saying that's why she knew that the words coming through that man was the words of the Most High God. She perceived it that way. You good, Anna? You all right? You gonna go home and cuss sis out? Don't cuss her out, man. <laughs> Read that scripture one more time. Second Ezra chapter seven and verse three. <laughs> yeah. And I said, speak on my God. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. Mm -hmm. But put the case, the entrance were narrow. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it? 
and to rule it. If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? So if you don't go through this narrow, dangerous place, you're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. There is also another thing. A city is, is builded and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. It's full of all good things. Go ahead. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Mm. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water. So small that there could but one man go there at once. So what that means is, again, brothers, sisters, is that you can only save yourself. You can only save yourself. If your spouse dies, you can't just jump into your emotions. You got to still stay on the path. Go ahead. Can we get Ezekiel 14 and 20? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the... Uh, if a spouse pass, right, and if you're going to keep going, are you going to fall out? If you're going to fall out. So understand this. Read. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 20. Yes, sir. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. So though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, we know there was righteous brothers, perfect in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Read. As I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. So... If, if 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 your husband stumble, die or fall out, right? Are you going to fall out? Because you can only your Lord can't drag you with him into the kingdom of heaven, mm -mm. right? Your your child can't drag you with him into the kingdom of heaven. Only you can drag yourself into the kingdom of heaven. When it says seek ye first the kingdom of God, it says seek ye. It doesn't say seek we, mm -hmm. right? So understand that, like if 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 your spouse stumbles out of truth, or God forbid they they fall out and they die, right? Understand that even though you're joined at the hip, right, to become one flesh, you can only get into the kingdom of heaven through your righteousness alone by you keeping these commandments of God. You know, something something JDL was saying yesterday when he was at camp um, is the ripple effect of keeping the commandments. And that's why I started with the regeneration first because you got to understand it's a ripple effect of you continuing to stay in this fight. If you choose to fall out of the fight and then you come back and your whole life is in tatters, you might wonder, why is my whole life in tatters right now? Probably something that happened generations back. You fell out and now you paying the consequences for it. Right. Why are the curses upon us? Because our forefathers and foremothers didn't keep the commandments. Now the ripple effects of us not keeping the commandments. We're in the state of oppression. We run. We 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 lead in the uh, what's the uh, school to prison pipeline. We, 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 you know, our children have been separated at the borders. All these things are the ripple effects of us not keeping the commandments of God. Now that we know the truth, we got to be able to say, okay, if I stay on this path, what's going to happen four generations from now when I come back? Let me stay on this path because when I do come back the next time, we're going to be in a way better place. Let me teach my son, my daughter, my children to stay on the path. Go back to it. Go back to uh. Second Ezra. Second Ezra, chapter seven and verse nine. Yeah. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? So you got to understand it's a test. This is all a test, right? The Lord is giving us a test. He said, if you don't make it through this test, you're not going to receive your inheritance. Go ahead. Verse 10. And I said. It is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. This is Israel's portion. This is what you got to go through. Go ahead. Verse 11. Because for their sakes I made the world. Mm -hmm. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. So that's why we in this state. Adam messed up. Now we all in this position. We got to be able to say, how can we affect change in our position is staying on the path keeping the commandments even if our spouse passes away go ahead then were the the entrances of this world made narrow full of sorrow and travail they are but few and evil full of perils and very painful so he said this world we in is full of evils full of evils now some of y'all i don't know who was 
Your Saudi was out there last night, right? We was at camp last night. We at camp, right? We going in. We out there teaching the word. And right across the street from us, it was a car accident. Bam, car ran into another. They get out. They arguing about whatever, you know what I'm saying? They drive off, right? Then maybe a, about an hour later, at the intersection right there, two cars collide, fishtail, almost jump on the curve, and they both drive off in separate directions. I don't know if they both had no insurance or what. It was crazy. I was like, they just had an accident, literally slammed into each other, and both sped away in opposite directions. It was crazy. So I go to jump, right? This is me trying to save my brother, right? I'm standing right there. Naquam is right here, and I'm trying to push Naquam back like this and then get to Onias. Then Naquam grabbed me. I'm like, Naquam, get off of me, man. I'm trying to get to your brother. The car is fish chilling like this. I'm like, Onias is about to die. Naquam is like hugging me or something. I'm like, what are you doing? Move out the way, Naquam. Trying to save the brothers. Go ahead, Anani. Little did you know they had a little beef earlier in the day. So he's like, let that Oh, be. that's what happened. No, that's why he didn't want me to get over there. there. I'm trying to save my brother. Fairmont. By the Denny's. Yeah, but Naquam was trying to save you. He didn't realize you nah, was Nah, I don't know what he was brother. doing, man. I think he was. Maybe. Maybe he was. I ain't going to speak down on the brother. Maybe he was. Read that scripture again. Verse 12. Yeah. Then were the entrance of this world made narrow. Here it come. Full of sorrow and travail. Full of sorrows and travail. Meaning what? It's going to be danger out there. Go ahead. They are but few and evil, full of perils. Full of perils. So you got to understand, it's evil things, it's perils out there. And like I, I know we talked about amongst the soldier's wives, right? I said, what is your job to do as a soldier's wife? You should be preparing your husband to go to camp, preparing him for war. You should be encouraging that thing. If he ain't going to camp, he ain't going to war, and you not encouraging that thing, you like, stay home with me and let's watch, uh, I don't know, whatever stuff they watching. Let's do that. That's that's you. You don't see the bigger picture. That might be another telltale sign that if that spouse passes away, you're going to fall right on out. Thank you. Scripture. Yeah, of course. Go to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse five. Because that's key. We got to question ourselves, especially us um, brothers that came in with other brothers, brothers that came with a spouse, you know, why are you in it? Are you in it because your homeboy is in it? Or are you in it because your wife is in it? Or are you in it because your husband is in it? And what happens if that person falls out, that person dies or whatever? You got me? Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man. So cursed be the man that trusteth in a man. All your trust is not really in the scriptures. It's in the brother or the sister or your spouse that brought you into this truth. Go ahead. And maketh flesh his arm. Mm -hmm. Making that person your strength. Go ahead. And whose heart departed from the Lord. And when, when that person is gone, what happens? You go back out into the world. Yep. It says, curse be that person. Curse be that person. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Sirach chapter 11. We're going to start at verse. Let's start at verse. No, nah, Sirach chapter 4. I'm sorry. Chapter 4, and we'll start at verse 11. There's the book of Sirach, chapter 4 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Wisdom exalteth her children, and layeth hold of them that seek her. Wisdom lay hold, lays hold on those that seek her. If you don't seek wisdom, it's never going to lay hold on you. Meaning what? You're never going to have that innate, that, that, that craving, Feel that sense of responsibility of keeping God's laws. You're never going to feel that. Why? Read it again. Sirach chapter 4 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Wisdom exalteth her children and layeth hold of them that seek her. Layeth hold on them that seek her. You got to seek wisdom out. It's going to lay hold on you. You can't be comfortable in a state of ignorance. Got to say, let me go seek out wisdom. If you are in here, if you came in here with a spouse that believed and you didn't really believe, you got to seek out wisdom because it will lay hold on you. It will pull you in. You'll say, dang, this thing got the answers to everything in my life. The ripple effect. Again, man, it's so it's so, so crazy. Like I said, we was out there. I don't know if I said it, JDL said it, but again, he said he'd be stealing, stealing stuff. So I, don't, I ain't going to take credit for it. Anyway, 
He was saying that uh, the ripple effects of keeping the commandments. He was talking to this one sister, and he was like, look, if you stop wearing pants, what's the ripple effects of that? You'll be seen as a modest woman, right? You won't end up a baby mama, right? You won't end up being a single parent. He was just going through the ripple effects of us keeping the commandments. It's a whole ripple effect to it. Go ahead. So when I first came to the truth, like I asked a question, like, how you doing, man, on the truth, right? And I was I was one of them uh, uh, individualites, mm -hmm. right? And I'm having a conversation. And, he said, and then he's like, how's your wife doing with her, her dresses and fringes and the rest of that? And, you know, I'm giving that little soft shoe that all you Negroes give, you know, honey, da, 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 <laughs> right? I'm doing all that, right? And then it was explained to me that if you go, I'm telling, I'm talking to you men specifically that got wives or thinking about having wives and, and they're not all the way in. If you go hard for the truth, that ripple effect is going to ripple down to your wife. So once I stopped playing, gathering, mm -hmm. right, uh, made it a priority to be here on New Moon, Tuesday class, whatever we had going on, guess what? My wife fell right in line. No pants, you know what I'm saying? Fringes on, everything. She ensured that I'm good to go every day for work. So there is a tangible ripple effect because I've seen it personally. Brothers right? don't believe that, man. Brothers don't believe that, man. They think I just be saying stuff, bro. Oh, I didn't want to say it was you. But oh. yeah, the captain's ass, we, we just had this conversation <laughs> when I first came in. You know what I'm saying? He was off his ass then. But, but he told me, he said, you go hard and the ripple effect of that thing is going to be your wife. And I don't know. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but so far, so good. So, so far, so good. First, let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Let's prove what you're saying because, again, I... None of this stuff is just me just saying it just because I want to say it. The book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 16. Yes. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Here it come. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, mm -hmm. and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. You got to understand, man. The, and brothers say that brothers not even in the keeping the commandments say that all the time. The woman, she just wants, she want a man to take charge and lead it. Y'all don't believe that. Y'all don't believe that thing. Y'all don't believe it. Read it again. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, mm -hmm. and he shall rule over thee. And he shall rule over thee. That's the way it's going to go. That's the way it's going to be. And if you don't believe that, if you want to do it the opposite way, you're going to fail. Your marriage is going to fall apart. Let's go back to where I'm at. Uh, Sirach chapter 4, verse 11. The book of Sirach chapter 4 and verse 11. Yes. Wisdom exalteth her children and layeth hold of them that seek her. Yeah. He that loveth her loveth life. And they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. So joy is going to come by you seeking wisdom. Joy does not come by you. What you say, uh, resting on your laurels. That's not how joy comes. Joy comes by you seeking wisdom, challenging yourself, pushing yourself to be better every day. And it don't look the same for everybody, right? Everybody's challenges are different, right? But you got to create. Give me that wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. I just, I just love that scripture so much. I just love it. I just, I, just, I just read it all the time. Just think about it all the time. Tell you, my wife think I'm crazy, but I'm in my mind, I'm doing this. Read that right quick. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 5. Here it comes. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit mm. and remove from, from thoughts that are without understanding. The Holy Spirit of discipline. I try to find a way to discipline myself in every way. I say, what's another form of discipline I can take on? What is another form of discipline? Where is the discipline at? Let me run towards the discipline. Brothers, run, a, run the opposite way from discipline. You be like, bro, you out of shape. You're about to die. Oh, well, it's your fault I'm out of shape. I'm about to die. Not, oh, let me find a way to discipline myself. You be having good food at the school. You be having good food at the school. I got to eat it. How's that my fault? <laughs> How is that my fault? You can say no. My uh, And my last commandment, this guy, he used to say this all the time. He say the most important exercise that the Edomite, Arnold Schwarzenegger, ever did was what? What was his most important exercise? Anybody know? Anybody know what he would say? His most important exercise. Anybody heard that? No? 
He said his most important exercise was something called push aways. He would push away from the table. That's how I, that was his most important exercise. Push aways. But anyway, man, that it's my fault that your, your your finances are in shambles. It's my fault that your marriage is in shambles. Not let me find a way to discipline myself in all these different things. Discipline. Go ahead. Uh, Psalms 139, verse 23. This is David, right, in a prayer that he's saying to, to the Most High God, right? And he's speaking about God's providence and his omnipresence and, and all the wonderful things God can, God, God can talk about. This is going down to one, Psalms 139. Then he talks about the destruction of thy enemy. Your enemy, Lord, is my enemy. But mm. then listen to what he says at the end. Read 28. Psalms chapter 139 and verse, there is no 28. Oh, uh, 23, I'm sorry. Verse 23. Not even, not even there. Okay, good. Search me, O God. Search what? Search me, O God. Because I'm telling you, everything we're talking about, self-evaluation plays a key, is, is like of the utmost importance. He says, search me, O God. Read. And know my heart. Know my heart. Know what I'm thinking. Understand what I'm going through. Read. Try me. Try me. Read. And know my thoughts. And know my thoughts. Read. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So see if there's any wicked way in me, but lead me in everlasting. Right. That's that's David's prayer. That should be your prayer also. Right. Get all that stuff out of me so I can keep these commandments of the most high God. Seek me and try me like we're reading in like we're reading in Sirach 4. Right. With, if you seek wisdom, it's going to be there for you. It's going to ride you through. We're going to get to it, though. Yep. But but it's right in that vein. Mm hmm. Let's go back. Let's go back to Sirach chapter 4. Sirach chapter 4 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. Mm. And wheresoever she entereth, the Lord will bless. They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One. They that, so you got to understand that, right? They that serve, what? Read that again. They that serve her. In reference to wisdom, go ahead. Shall minister to the Holy One. Shall minister. A lot of times when brothers and sisters I'm sorry, when brothers are out teaching the people, you are ministering unto the Holy One. You might think, oh, I'm just teaching this random crackhead in the street. I'm just treat teaching Jody on a bike. Ah, man, it say you minister unto the Holy One. Go ahead. And them that love her, the Lord doth love. Them that love wisdom, the Lord loves them. Let's go. Let's go to this. Let's go to uh, Sirach. Stand for Sirach again. Nope, you know what? Matter of fact, go to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3. Proverbs 11 and 3. There's the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 3. Yeah. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, mm. but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Read that again. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. Integrity, integrity, integrity. What you have to maintain, regardless of death happening around you, you have to maintain your integrity. You got to, brothers and sisters. You got to maintain your integrity. Let's go to this. Let's go back to Sirach one more time. Chapter 14, we'll start at 12 this time. 4 or 14, sir? 14, verse 12. There's the book of Sirach, chapter 14 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Remember that death will not be long in coming, and that the covenant of the grave is not showed unto thee. Mm. Do good unto thy friend before thou die. Read that one more time. Do good unto thy friend before thou die. Start at 12. Verse 12. Remember that death will not be long in coming. Remember that death will not be long in coming. Some of you out of shape brothers, out of shape sisters, Death is not going to be long and come. We already see time is speeding up, right? Time is speeding up. And then on top of that, you unhealthy? Man, I got to change my diet. I got to lose some weight, man. You know what I'm saying? I got to get it together. I got to find a new form of discipline. I'm finna, I'm finna start utilizing pushaways. No more Ben and Jerry's for me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm talking about myself. I'm literally talking about me. I'm going to stop. I'm going to push away from the Ben and Jerry's. I'm going to stop. Dang, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, and I. No, I was just going to say, um, you got to find out what your poison is. Yep. All right? So, like, 
you may see me sit up here and and eat some something crazy, you know, yep. like that. But it doesn't mean that you can do that. You got to know your own selves, yep. right? Just because you know your metabolism is not mine and mine is not yours. My you know? metabolism has slowed down. Right. You know? <laughs> and and like I said, know your poison, bro. Because um, we said this body is is the Lord's temple, correct? Exactly. So when you think about think about the brother DMX. Mm. Why did he die? He didn't die because he got the corona shot. I'm, not, I'm just going to put that, smash that real quick. He died because he was so addicted to crack, he wouldn't leave that poison alone. Mm. If overeating is your poison, that's the same thing as DMX taking all that crack and it lead him to destruction. Yep. Yep. Hey, get Proverbs uh, 25 and 28. There's the book of Proverbs, chapter 25 and verse 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit. He or she that has no rule over their spirit, read. Is like a city that is broken down. Bang. It's like a broken down city just busted, read. And without walls. And without walls, right? So that's exactly what Officer Ananias just said. Yeah. If you can't rule your spirit, if it's Cap's reason why you all are out of weight because we serve good food up in IUIC <laughs> San Diego, or you ain't got no money, Right, it's because you don't got rule over your own spirit. You ain't got rule over your own spirit. And Solomon said, "You like a broken down city with no walls." You got to rule over. You got to crave discipline, Israel. You got to find a way to discipline every part of your life. You got to. And again, these are the things that's going to keep you in if your spouse passes away. These are the things that's going to keep you locked into the fight. That discipline. You think I'm saying? Let's go back to uh, Sirach chapter 14. Where I'm at? Where I'm at? You remember where I was at? Uh, started at 12. Go ahead. Where are we at? Sirach chapter 14 and verse 13. Yeah. Do good, do good unto thy friend. Before I'm on 12. One more time. Verse 12. Yeah. Remember that death will not be long in coming. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that the covenant of the grave is not showed unto thee. The covenant of the grave. What is it? A covenant. That's a promise. The promise of the grave. The grave is coming. That is a promise. So you might as well start mentally preparing yourself. Now you got to start doing the mental reps now. Death is going to come. What are you going to do? How am I going to react? How am I going to uh, uh, endure if, the, if death does come? How, how am I going to um, um, handle how, how is my family prepared in case of death? Right? Do I got a will? Do I got the paperwork set up? Power of attorney, all these different things. You got this stuff set up, life insurance. Got this stuff set up when you die. I have a conversation. I had this conversation with uh somebody in my family. And it was like a, it was like talking to a kid, man. I couldn't understand. I was like, you don't have no life insurance, nothing. So what you're telling me is that you when you die, you expect me to just pay for everything for you. That's what you're telling me right now when I'm having this conversation with you. Come on, man. You're not doing nothing to prepare yourself. Nothing. You don't even just have a plot of land where we can bury you. No, nope, I got nothing. Where's all your money? I spent it in the casino. How does that help me? <laughs> Go ahead. You know what I'm Israel don't think they're gonna die. They don't think. Who they in this die. world in this room has has not been born? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. That was. I was asking uh, trick questions, was, man. Exactly. Everybody <laughs> in this in this room was born. Yes, sir. At one time. At one time. So who in this room is not gonna die? Dang. Okay, I was well. I was, there you go. Okay, so there then, you go. We got some vampires in here, baby. You know, know you're gonna die. <laughs> Prepare for that. Yep. It's like I used to be an insurance agent, man, and talking to Israel was like Esau would get it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got to make sure my kids are taken care of. <laughs> I got to make sure my wife is taken care of. The first thing Israel will always come to me is like. I don't want her living all, spending all her <laughs> money with another dude. I'm like. We think we think they gonna kill us to get the insurance yeah, exactly. money. <laughs> Make preparation for your death, and that's, that's not just in money and property and all that stuff. It's how you live your life. Yep. Because most important thing is how you live your life according to these scriptures. Mm -hmm. Because when death comes, you're gonna have to answer for that one way or the other. But that's the thing: the 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 the, uh, the applying the application of the scriptures is gonna equal to you making sure your children are prepared. It shouldn't be, oh, I read the Bible and I wear fringes now and I show up on the Sabbath. It's what can I get out of here to truly prepare for life after I die? Right. Because like, like that's in the Bible. Said, 
Well, wisdom brings joy, right? Exactly. What's the flip side of that? Misery. Mm. If you don't seek wisdom, and that's why so many brothers and sisters are miserable today because yep. they don't seek wisdom. They don't seek they wisdom. They go by their own vain opinions that they're going to be able to figure it out on their own selves. Mm -hmm. The scriptures will tell you, and if you can't find the scriptures, you got brothers, you got sisters that been in the scriptures longer than you that you could be going to. But no, we got to make our own decision, and then we wonder why we're in such a mess. Right. Sisters got big sisters that they can go to. Brothers, y'all got y'all soldiers, y'all officers that y'all can call on if y'all got questions. Let's go to that in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 22, one of my favorite scriptures talking about if you die. What are you supposed to do? Does the scripture talk about that? Let's see. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 21. Here we go. He that despises his neighbor. That's sinning. wrong. I'm sorry. 13 and 22. I was all excited. My bad. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22. Yes. A good man. A what kind of man? A good man. A stupid man. A good man. A good man. Leaveth an inheritance. Leave it what? Leaveth an inheritance. Okay. To his children. To his what? To his children. To his children's. Children. To his children's children. He's preparing for life after death. He's preparing for his children's children. Is he going to be here to see the whole life of his grandchildren? No. But if he's preparing for them, they're going to be taken care of. Right? It's something called the law of seven, right? I don't, I don't, not to over math y'all to death, but you know it, right? The law of seven, right? Every seven years, these things, your, 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 your uh, interest uh, doubles. So how many more sevens could you get if you prepare for your children's children? And if your parents prepare for your children's children, how many more sevens could you get out of that interest? But we don't think like that. We don't think like that. The Bible is telling you to do that. We're reading the scripture right now, and y'all don't even think that this is talking about y'all. Y'all not think reading the scripture and saying, how can I apply this to my life? When I read the scripture, that's what I think. How, if I'm a good man, how can I leave an inheritance to my children's children? I, I read that and I say, well, how do I find a way to do that? I don't read that thing. Ah, oh, that's just a that's just a beautiful proverb. No, it's 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 an action that you gotta take. It's a literal action you are reading that God has given you to take. Prepare for your children's children. That means prepare for the life of your grandchildren after you dead. It's telling you prepare for the your possible next lifetime. Hey, well, that's, you know, that's, Dude, you, now you go. Now you see. I'm, now yeah, you think. Now you thinking. And your children's 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 children could that's be gonna you. Be your, that's gonna be your parents. That's right. That's really what he's saying. Exactly. He's saying prepare for your parents. So when you come back, your parents are already in a position to help you. Man, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like you really got to look His at it His voice that went way. real high. Too. I ain't never heard your voice like, get that high. Really he was excited. He was really excited. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like you really got to look at it that way. Nah. They and don't and we don't. They don't believe. We don't. They don't believe. And, and to be honest with they you. They got to wear know, fringes, bro. That's all they got to do is wear fringes and sit in here. That's that it. really just clicked to me <laughs> just now when you were saying that. I'm like, well, shoot. Why do you think I do the stuff I do half the time? That's what I'm reading it and I'm saying, well, how do I do this? So when you come back, if you're not doing these things, what kind of life are you going to come back to? <laughs> Chaos. You know, like, damn. Everything else. Why, why my mom and them so poor? Why are they doing it? Why are roaches I, I, coming I, I, out? I got a question. I, I got a question. <laughs> so a this inheritance that we just read about, is this all monetary? Nah. What else What else is including this? I'm going to get it. Dang, this guy's good, man. You're always thinking about what I'm thinking. Oh, man, I'm, I keep jumping the gun. Let's go to it. <laughs> I keep jumping the gun. Nah, you good. You good. Let's go to that. And Ciroc, uh, dang, I was supposed to pull it. I never pull it. Hold on. Let me find it right quick. Nah, go ahead. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. So, so, so what kind of inheritance are we supposed to leave our kids? That's the question. Obviously, you know, life insurance, money, you know, maybe a home. What, what else are we supposed to leave them kids? Me, I ain't got. I ain't gonna say no jokes. Go ahead. What was supposed <laughs> to leave us here? Um, land. Land. Okay, mm. I, I agree with you. Just keep on passing the mic down. Our heritage, our nationality, our kingdom. All right. Who we are Israel. All right. All right. Joel three and two. Mm. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. So rock thirty. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll go say. The same thing you said. Oh, go ahead. All right. All right. Okay, we ready. 
Sirach 30. Start at verse 1. There's the book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that loveth his son causes him often to feel the rod, mm. that he may have joy of him in the end. In the end, when he's dead and gone, he's going to be able to look at his son and say, look, man, this guy got his life together. Go ahead. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintances. Mm -hmm. he that and, that, and that's true, man. I'm telling you, man, I get excited sometimes. I'll be like, look, man, Shiloh can read, can tell you the whole Isaiah 11 off his dome. You know what I'm saying? I get excited about that thing. He can tell you what righteousness is. He can tell you what sin is. He can tell you what the fifth commandment is, what the sixth commandment is. Read that scripture again, read verse two. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him mm -hmm. and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintances. Shall rejoice of him among his brothers, among his sisters. He can show, look at my son, look at my daughter, look how, look at what they have developed into. Look at them develop. And you can see it from the youth up. I was talking to Shiloh the other day. He said, I'm going to be a reader one day. I was like, oh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited for that day. I get excited, man. See my son and myself up here one day teaching a class. That would be crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So think about this. Imagine if your grandfather would have taught your father that you was an Israelite, right? He, he, he would have taught you that you should wear fringes and that Deuteronomy 7 and 6 applied to you. Think about the inheritance you would have now. So when you think about inheritance, right, just don't think in terms of monetary gain, land. This is an inheritance that you should pass on to your son. Uh, what's that, Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child, right? So this is heritage is just as this inheritance is import, more important than that little fine, that, that little twenty five thousand you're going to get. You know what I'm saying? Th th this is the inheritance that you should teach your children's children. Because to think about what I just said, if your granddaddy would have taught your pappy, what would you be right now? Let's go back to Sirach 30. Where I'm at? Verse, verse three. three. Mm hmm. Sharak chapter 30 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. Yes. And before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Yep. Thou his father though his father died. So one day when you die, go ahead. Yet he is as though he were not dead. As though you like never died. You supposed to be part of you, right? And preparing for if you die is what? Teaching your children. They supposed to be able to continue on the fight for you. That's, that's a deliberate task you got to make a priority. Some of you sisters, some of you brothers, y'all got to make that a priority, sitting down and teaching your children. And as quiet as it might be kept, some brothers don't do that thing. They don't think it's a priority. They'll be at camp all day long. But when it comes to dealing with the children, dealing with the wife, they don't know nothing. It's my, my job to teach them. I guess I was supposed to teach them everything. Nah, man, what I'm saying is going to go in one ear and out the other. I just sound like a dude complaining about something up here. You got to do that thing. When you get home, you got to teach them. Got to teach that wife and teach them children the commandments of God. And you got to continue to up that level of understanding all the time. All the time. I'm always looking for a way. All right, he know four precepts. Let me teach him five precepts now. He knows six. Let him know ten now. You know what I'm saying? Let me make sure he can read. And I, I, I say this all the time, man, in reference to reading, what we do a lot of time as a people, we know how to read words, but we don't know how to comprehend what we're reading. The sooner you teach your children to read, the sooner they develop the muscle to comprehend what they're reading. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, a, it's a process. You got to start the process of knowing sight words, knowing memory words. And then you, they say those things for a while. And then at some point, they'll start saying, well, what does this mean? What does this what does this equal to? How do I actuate this? How do I live this? That's what you do. You got to start by teaching them the basic sight words, how to read and all those different things. And then when they develop those things, now they'll start moving into comprehension. And then it, we wonder why our, our kids, when they say they read on the 12th grade level, I mean, they read on a uh, third or fourth grade level. All that means is they can read the words, but they cannot comprehend what they're reading. That's what they're literally saying to you. Because you never took that time to develop them. What does that mean? Ask them. I ask them sometimes. I ask Shiloh sometimes. What does this mean that you just read? What does that mean? What is the what is the what was the moral of the story? Or what was the what happened? What happened in the story? You know what I'm saying? What time did they have to come back? What time did they have to leave? Different different things, different questions in there. And that tells you if they're learning comprehension skills. Go ahead, Anna. I'm sorry. I just jump off into parenting. No, that's good. It's all <laughs> part of the same thing. It's yeah. like um 
Like you said, you're going to ask them five times out of ten, they probably won't understand. Yep. But what do you do? you got to be able to take the time to go back to review the story that you told them and give them the understanding. Yep. That's how comprehension becomes to, to, to take place. Yep. Go yep. to uh, Psalm 78. We're going to work five, five through seven. Because, yeah, I wish I could do it all over again. Mm. You know, you brothers, you sisters out here got these little children. You got the opportunity to turn them into some great young men and women. Yep. You know? But you got to take the time to teach them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 78 and verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So we're supposed to make all of this stuff that we're learning, pass it on to our children. Why? Let's go. Verse 6. That the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born. Who should arise and declare them to their children? So it's telling you just like that, leaving adherence to your children's children. You may not be here, but you taught your children how to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. You taught them about their heritage. Mm -hmm. You taught them that God only loves you. Mm -hmm. Okay, finish it up. Verse 7, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Because if we don't do that, none of this is going to come to pass. Let's go back to Sirach chapter 30 right quick. I'm at five. Sirach chapter 30 and verse five. Yeah. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. Mm -hmm. And when he died. And when he died. He was not sorrowful. Mm -hmm. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies. How do you leave behind you an avenger to your enemies? How you do that if you're not teaching them nothing? That's how you make sure that your children and your wife are going to stay in the fight. You make sure that you're spending that time teaching them something. Got to make that a priority. I'm telling you, every Sabbath day, again, I'm jumping off on the run. But every Sabbath, before I leave to come to school, me and Shiloh, we sit down and we read a proverb. And I ask them, what do proverbs mean? What does the word proverb mean? Wise sayings. Okay. All right, so these are wise sayings we're looking at today, son. These are things that a father taught his son. Every Sabbath, we do that. Now, through the week, we'll read other scriptures. But every Sabbath, I make sure we go over a proverb. You know what I'm saying? Because I want that to stick in his head. How can I hear my father when he's no longer here? How can I hear him? He can always go to Proverbs. I remember my dad talking to me about this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's go back to um, Sirach. Let's go to chapter 14. We'll start at verse 12. I read 11, right? Did I do 11 or did I do 14? I did 11, right? Chapter 11? I did chapter 11 already, right? Yes, sir. All right, let's go to chapter 14. Start at verse 12. Sirach, chapter 14 and verse 12. Yeah. Remember that death will not be long coming, mm -hmm. and that the covenant of the grave is not showed unto thee. Mm. Do good unto thy friend before thou die, and according to thy ability, stretch out thy hand and give to him. Defraud not thyself of the good day, mm. and let not the part of a good desire overpass thee. Shalt thou not leave thy travails unto another, and thy labor to be divided by lot? So he say, he say right here, shall not, shall thou not leave thy travails unto another? When you die, those travails, those issues that you had, they're left to your children. What's that song? Uh, Papa was a Rolling Stone. But here come the last part. What he say? When he died, and when he died, what did he leave him? Oh, something, something. All he oh, left oh. him was alone. <laughs> Meaning he owed somebody some money. He left him some debt. That's all your daddy left you behind was some debt. That's the, not the type of men we should be. That's not the type of sisters we should be if we're keeping the commandments. We should just leave behind a bunch of debt for our children. It, it, it says, it says, it says, uh, shalt thou not leave travails unto another. Mm -hmm. it's all, 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 all those travails, right? Is uh everything in Deuteronomy twenty eight, fifteen to sixty eight, mm -hmm. right? And if you're not leaving that inheritance that we spoke of and letting them know who they are for your children's children, them travails, they're gonna go out there. It's gonna be Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty five. It's gonna be twenty eight and twenty eight. They're gonna be akin to Deuteronomy twenty eight thirty seven. They're gonna continue to do Deuteronomy twenty eight forty eight. All these things are gonna continue to happen, right? If you don't do what you're supposed to do. And you just leave your travails because of, for for lack of uh 
for lack of guidance, for lack of you being a man or a woman, those those travails are, are, are right there. Right. I read that Deuteronomy 28. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 48. I read that and I think about, well, what can I do to help my children? Read that thing. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Yeah. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Yes. Which the Lord shall send against thee mm -hmm. in hunger. In hunger. So I got to figure out how can I put my children in a position where they, where they can be in a position to provide food for themselves. Go ahead. And in thirst. And in thirst. How can I put my children in a position to where they don't have to depend on old tie water or whatever to, to, to get water? I say, man, I, I said this the other day to my wife. I said, I know we just got a place, but I'm going to go try to find some acres somewhere with a well. I'm going to go try to find it. She's like, this nigga's crazy. I'm telling you, that's not just what she thinks. But I read the scriptures and I say, how can I find a way to implement this into my life? It's not just I'm just randomly moving. I'm looking at the scriptures. I say, all right, I got to try to I got to try to find a way to accomplish this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. And in want of all things. And want of education and understanding. You have to make those things a priority in want of all things. These are the curses that are upon us. We see these problems. How are we going to fix them? Before you die, what are you going to do to fix these things? Go back to uh, Sirach 14. You got something in there? I'm sorry. You good? Okay. Sirach chapter 14 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Give and take. And sanctify thy soul, for there is no seeking of dainties in the grave. So in the grave, it's no uh, you bringing stuff with you, Too right? Late. You're not bringing your your S class bins with you. You're not bringing it with you. Can't bring it. You can't bring it, man. Ain't no hearse. Ain't no uh, Brinks <laughs> truck following the hearse. Nah, man. Uh, nah, that ain't how you happened. ain't bringing it. Go ahead. All flesh waxes old as a garment. Mm -hmm. For the covenant from the beginning is. Thou shalt die the death. The covenant from the beginning is that you know you're going to die. You brothers, you sisters, you know you're going to die. You know that death is going to happen around you. How are you going to react to it? Are you going to stay grounded? Are you going to stay rooted? Are you going to stay in the truth? What are you going to do? One more. Uh, Sirach 4 and 28. We'll start at verse. Hold on. Let me get it. Let me get it. Sirach 4. We'll start at verse, what's the one we was looking at earlier? Was it 11? 4 and 11? Uh, we already looked at that one. 4 and, we'll start at... Uh, 28, we was reading earlier. Strive strive for the truth. Yeah, the I, I, start at verse uh, 26. Sirach, chapter 4 and verse 26. Yeah. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins, mm -hmm. and force not the curse of the rivers. Force not the course of the river. Meaning, don't try to, to do whatever. Re read that again. Watch this. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins, mm -hmm. and force not the course of the river. Keep going. Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man, mm -hmm. neither accept the person of the mighty. Go ahead. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. So strive for the truth unto death. Meaning what? You have to continue to find a way to discipline yourself in every way. Until you die. And how are you going to react to those deaths? How are you going to react to if your wife dies in the truth? How are you going to react to if your husband dies in the truth? What do you want to do? Are you going to stay in the fight or are you going to give up? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.